Do you recognize that guy? It's New England Patriots star quarterback and reigning Super Bowl MVP Tom Brady sumo wrestling this week in Japan. Brady was on a tour of Asia as the famous face of Under Armour. When Brady signed with Under Armour in 2010, it marked a big moment in the history of the company. One of the biggest stars in the world had defected from unrivaled sports behemoth Nike because, he said, he noticed young players from Pee Wee Leagues to his own NFL locker room were wearing Under Armour gear. Brady also was drawn to the energy of the former college football player who founded the company, Kevin Plank. Although Plank's little startup now is very much in the game with Nike and Adidas, he still runs Under Armour like an underdog. I spent the day with Kevin at the company's headquarters in Baltimore, a city he's helping to transform for a Sunday sit-down. This is a top secret facility. What are they making on this line? So this is something we have called our Ares Project. It's something that we can build here really in a matter of days versus typically taking months or even years. Walking the floor of his state-of-the-art innovation factory in Baltimore, Kevin Plank is obsessed with what's next. The process can just be better. It can be safer, it can be more efficient, it can be faster. But it's got to become a commercial product. The consumer can say, that's something I want to wear. It's going to make me a better athlete, make me a better human, makes my butt look thinner. Perhaps the most important quality, makes my butt look <laughs> thinner. You're going to run smarter. Now the head of a nearly $5 billion global sports empire, the 44-year-old Plank started his first business as a freshman at the University of Maryland. With the help of his future wife, DJ, Plank sold Valentine's Day roses on campus. Grossed about $3,000, cost me about 1000 bucks, pocketed two grand. Not bad spending money for a college kid. See, that's not normal for most college kids. Did you see something ahead for yourself, like this could be the first step in creating something else bigger? Well, I learned from Roses is that I was pretty good at, at creating a central idea of like having a vision of what it could be. It was his next vision that would become America's second largest sports performance gear company. A scrappy football player at Maryland who never missed a practice in five years Plank was bothered by the weight of the sweat-soaked cotton t-shirts he wore under his pads. What if we made something like out of a synthetic material like you wear in like a compression short but for the upper body? Working out of his grandmother's basement after graduation in 1996, Plank had 500 shirts made and began shopping them around to friends in NFL locker rooms. What was that first year like? Multiple voices, like answer the phone, like, I'm not working, I help you. Can I speak to your president, please? Just one minute. Hello, this is Kevin. Pl I mean, you know, I used to carry two sales cards, you know, two business cards with me. One that said Kevin Plank sales manager, another one that said Kevin Plank president. He made his first deal with the football program at Georgia Tech, and the company grew steadily from there. In 1999, Under Armour had its breakthrough moment when Plank got his gear in front of the costume designer on an Oliver Stone movie. We had a big break with the movie Any Given Sunday. I get a call on Monday uh, saying this is so-and-so uh, from Oliver's office. We want to use this in the movie. And I said, great, where do you want to send the invoice to? And they're like, invoice? This is Hollywood, we don't do that. And I was like, no, no, no. Everybody pays a good, fair price for our product. And one of the proudest moments of my life is that we were paid $42,000 from Any Given Sunday. <laughs> The roots of Kevin's hustle are in the Maryland home where he grew up as the youngest of five boys. How did that shape the guy who's sitting here right now? Is that where the scrappiness comes from? Yeah, I could speak to a few nights of being hung by my underwear, like in a closet, which is called babysitting in my house. And that definitely puts a chip on your shoulder. You know, you always wanna, you wanna show them, you wanna, you wanna tell them that you can do more, that you can be more. Today, Plank counts some of those family members among the more than 14,000 people he employs around the world. And Under Armour has a stable of A-list athletes that includes five-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady, Olympic swimming legend Michael Phelps, and two-time NBA MVP Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors just won the NBA championship again. What does that mean to you and to Under Armour to have one of your signature guys be elevated in that way, on that stage? It means a lot. It means a lot to show athletes to validate your brand and your product on field. With revenue of $32 billion last year, 
Nike is far and away the world's largest sports performance gear company. How much do you think about Nike? We're aware of them. We have great respect for them, what they do. They don't, they don't fight fair. Why don't they fight fair? You know, big companies do what big companies do. Like, they've got more money. When we run a commercial, we get one shot. The commercial's got to be great. It's got to hit. Okay, you got to tell me, true or false, in the early days of Under Armour, you used to send the head of Nike, Phil Knight, a Christmas card every year and say, you will know our name. Yeah, that's true. The people I was trying to recruit and try to get, you know, to come join the company, you know, I was pitting this as it is us versus them. And everybody else had this sort of like, are you crazy? You're not even on the radar. To me, we were always in the radar. You know, to me, we were always in that game. To me, we were always in that fight. You guys, for your company, for the better part of a decade, were growing rocket ship to the moon, double-digit growth every year. And then the fourth quarter of last year, you hit a little bit of a roadblock that scared Wall Street. What happened there? I think we've found that there's a bit of a shifting market that's happened in the marketplace where, you know, the obligation of brands is to make sure that, first of all, freshness and newness, whoever makes the best product is going to win. And there was just all these sort of things converging at one, at one moment in time. Under Armour has bounced back, but Plank made another unwelcome headline in February with a comment praising President Trump's business background. To have such a pro-business um, president is something that's a real asset for this country. The criticism for his perceived support of the president came quickly. Even Steph Curry questioned it. I think that it was unfortunate that my words got characterized in a way that were meant to be divisive in some way, shape, or form. Look, I am the eternal optimist, and I believe in this country. I believe in the opportunity that we have. And I'll always find the best of any situation that I'm ever given. In today's day and age, that there is no room for politics. Like, you're not allowed to give a basic answer where you can try and say, I'm gonna hit this one right down the middle and everybody will be happy. The fact is, is that there is no room for that, is that people wanna know where you stand and what issues you stand for. Plank would rather be known for his stand on Baltimore a troubled city others have left for dead. His development company has opened a hotel and a distillery there. And combined with public funds, Plank will spend $5.5 billion on a long-term project to completely transform the city's distressed waterfront. I love blowing minds. I love people seeing things and saying, um, I never could have thought or could have imagined. I hope to believe and hopefully be some representative that you know, the American dream is something that's very much alive and there's a lot of people that don't feel that right now, but hopefully that we can be some of that you know, feeling that it can happen and so we just gotta keep, keep it running, keep it going in the right direction. As part of that development of Baltimore, Plank has created a hub to train workers and to incubate startups. He also has donated millions to education programs in the city. Meanwhile, Under Armour just keeps growing. The company has spent nearly $1 billion over the last couple of years buying up diet and activity apps, creating a community of nearly 150 million users who are exposed every day to Under Armour. For a behind-the-scenes look at the Under Armour Lighthouse Innovation Center, where they put me in the machine that studies the movement of world-class athletes like Tom Brady and Steph Curry, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.